Okay, where are we and what are we doing? Well, I thought I'd do a little review on Solid XK. And now this is Solid K. Um, and let's bring up their homepage. I guess there are two types of people who are going to be watching this. There are going to be the people who have never seen Linux before in their life and they want to know what I'm using. These will be the people who are the subscribers to my uh, gaming channel. There will also be people who do understand Linux, they've never seen my channel before, um, and they want to know what makes Solid different from everything else. So what is Solid? Solid XK um, is a Debian-based Linux distribution. Uh, the X and the K stand for the ver different variants. There is a, an X desktop and a K desktop. X is lightweight. K is fully functioned, fully featured for more modern computers. I'm running K, which means I'm running KDE. Now, there's another subdivision. There's the business and home. Business edition is basically built on Debian, Debian stable, so therefore is rock solid. Very little will change. Uh, you'll get security updates, obviously, but very little will change. And this gives business the opportunity for the predictability that they require in their use. They also do a server and uh, a back-end um, type stuff. So for a small business, and um, as they say, what do they say, solid business edition, they do a little look in here. And they do um, <coughs> the the business edition has all the tools you need to get on with um, your business. They also have a back office, which is and there goes the telephone. Oh, good! Is the wife going to answer? Yeah, she answered the phone. Cool. I hadn't forgotten I'd put the blooming spare phone in the office. So the back office gives. Um, some of the backup support that you need with a range of tools built in to the back office um, to, for running your business and you can look into this yourselves if you wish but there's a whole suite of tools that you would need to help you run your business but to be honest not particularly interested in that because I'm into the home edition because the home edition is based on hopefully I get this right, Debian testing. Can't remember the code name, but anyway, it's more up to date. It changes a little more frequently and it's it's a semi-rolling release. Now, what they mean by that is they security updates you get straight away, but updates to the system get tested and released and pushed out once every three months, so that's once a quarter but you don't have to reinstall your system each time. So we have a choice, um, Solid X on the X Office or X XFCE desktop, which is lighter. Also some of the applications chosen within the X uh, edition are lighter weight. So if you have a slightly older equipment, older kit, go for the X, um, available in 32 and 64 bit available as a direct or a torrent which is pretty cool um, and I mean for instance the office comes with with Abbey Word and G numeric rather than LibreOffice you can still install them if you want to it's just let's keep things a little bit on the lighter side um, and if we have a look down here uh, memory and disk usage um, dum -dum 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 -dum, once installed the 32-bit will only be using about 160 meg of RAM and about 3.5 gig of hard drive space. It is a bit on the light side. Now, Solid K is what I'm using. Solid K is for more modern computers. The, K, the KDE desktop environment is more fully featured. Whistles, bells and all sorts of loveliness. Um, so... <coughs> Again, we have Office applications and things. Now, for those who are... N oh, I mentioned the um, memory and disk usage. Uh, the 64-bit memory usage will be around 400 megs, and the disk usage will be about 6 gig. 
32-bit will be 250 meg, uh, again with a disk usage at about uh, 6 gig. This is one of those distros that once you install it, all your codecs are there. A lot of what you might consider to be things to install after um, installing the operating system, you won't have to do. The little tweaks and things, I've spent a lot of time with Ubuntu and uh, there is a, a good hours work after an install downloading and configuring and setting up. You don't have to do it with this, this is pretty much out of the box what you need. I mean it comes with Steam pre-installed. That's how um, together this distro is. Um, for the people who are um, coming from Windows and have no idea when you install Windows, all you get pretty much is Windows and and Internet Explorer and um, I don't think modern Windows don't even know if you get an email program. But with a Linux distribution, you don't just get the operating system; you get nearly all of the programs you need and could possibly need on a daily basis. They're already pre-installed, so you don't have to go out and install lots of things afterwards. You can pretty much get up and running uh, within a few minutes of installing and installation only takes around 15 minutes as well so Linux distribu distributions are more complete they come bundled with everything I stuck DistroWatch up on here if you want to have a look at what DistroWatch has to say about Solid X and Solid K Debian based distributions with the X Office and KDE desktops respectively um, Solid XK aims to be simple to use, providing an environment that is both stable and secure. Solid XK is an open source alternative for small businesses and non profit organizations and home users. The project started as, as an unofficial variant of Linux Mint Debian's edition, with the KDE as the default desktop, but was later given its own uh, identity as Solid K. Solid X was added after Linux Mint dropped its Debian-based flavor of XFCE desktop. So that's where it came from. It came, these guys came from Mint. Um, Mint does its thing, Solid XK does its own. So I suppose it's time to tell you, well no, I'll go into why I use this and why a little later, but for instance if you notice I am running this is Google Chrome. Google Chrome I had to download and install independently. went beautifully. Um, so the desktop itself is pretty standard um, for a KDE desktop. I like a very very clean desktop. This is a personal choice on my account. I could have all sorts of widgets and bits and bobs all over the place. I choose not to because I don't particularly like them. So let's have a little look in the menu system. This is um, a fairly intelligent menu. I like the fact that I can, without touching my mouse, bring it up, start typing, and it stuff comes up. Stuff comes up. I'm not quite sure why this turns up. This is actually a link I used earlier, yesterday, for mounting my hard drives because I have a cop hard drive system. The If you don't like the uh, kickoff application launcher, this fancy menu, I mean it is pretty damned intuitive but there are some people who, traditionalists, who don't like this type of thing. Um, and that's fine because what you do is you right click and you go to switch to classic and what we have now is a more classically laid out, no animation, no frills, um, things. Now these are the the packet the applications I've installed um, and we can see that I've, I've been a little bit of a busy boy downloading a whole load of stuff. These ones at the bottom these these sort of turned up when I installed um, Chrome or Chromium because these are the sum but not all of my Chrome applications um, yeah like Hangout, Call, Google Keep Google Keep very useful, but um, and again we've got this this one top t turned up, which is Chrome Apps, which again is what I was talking about. But because I installed Solarium, which 
I've always liked to have Solarium installed. It's um, basically, as I say, it's a desktop planetarium. Education and science turned up, but games, we have Play and Linux pre-installed. We have Steam pre-installed. Um, now this is the... Hang on, I've got it running in the background. Hang on. Oops. Steam. This is the Linux version of Steam. I own quite a few games because uh, I make gaming videos. And these are all my Linux games. There is one in here that's a little weird. Goat Simulator. Goat Simulator appears, apparently, as a game that you can run on Linux. You can't. It'll down Steam will download it, but it won't install. Um, it's a mistake by the people who make Goat Simulator that they have it flagged as being a Linux game. And it's not. Uh, for instance, hang on, let's go here. If I go all games, you'll see the games that I own uh, on Windows as well. For instance, Daisy and Armour 3. Um, and the ones that are greyed out pretty much are the ones that I own that I cannot install through this native Linux Steam client. And as you can see, there's quite a few. But then there's quite a few I can play straight out of the box. Now, I want to play those games that I own uh, on Linux. I have to use an em well, basically em an emulator. It's wine. They don't like the word emulator. But what you do, I should have set this up, shouldn't I? Prior to do doing, um, because this is going to run through its setup process, isn't it? First use. <coughs> basically, it's going to install wine, which is a compatibility layer uh, for Windows. Now, not all. Windows programs work perfectly um, to the point where for years as a gamer I didn't bother playing games in Linux, I would play games in Windows I'd always keep a Windows um, partition um, a Windows partition ready but it has a whole host of things it thinks it can install basically these are if you've got the disk these will set the game up so it says here I should be able to install Modern Warfare 4 and Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare sorry Call of Duty 4 uh, Modern Warfare 2 and 3 that, that might be interesting and, and run them under wine but there's a whole host of games here all the good old games look at them all sat here that's cool. And these are basically profiles so that there's a good chance that they will run properly. One hopes they will. But there are no real guarantees when it comes to running Windows software um, on Linux. Now that said, some of it is better than others. Do you notice here, Office 2000, 2003, 2007, 2010 with the activation yeah, if you desperately, desperately, desperately needed Microsoft Office and you were running in a Windows environment, you can actually install them. Obviously, you have to own them, but you can actually install them and get them to run. Quite why you would have Abby were. Uh, oh, well. So, very quick look at that. That's not quite what I intended to have a look at, but hey, you know what it is. So, right, what was I going to do next? I'm going to set up my, my system. Ah, of course that doesn't work this way, does it? I've got to uh, switch back to the launcher style. And we'll have a little look at... I just noticed that my... When I type... Recently opened links open. Or, no, this isn't recently opened links. These are my bookmarks. Weird. Anyway. Having a look at my hard drive, it's a bit complicated, so, um... Oops. That was if I spell correctly. So we have a little look at my hard drive setup. I have physically three hard drives. 
SDA, which is the first one attached to my computer, which is a, an, S an SSD, 256 gig. I have SDB, which is a mechanical, it's a Western Digital Black, so it's nice and fast. And I have uh, a scratch disk, which is also another SSD, which I bought, a very inexpensive uh, 60 gig, which I use f as part of my video rendering and editing and stuff. And the only, they're all pretty. The the formatting is all fairly standard when it comes to these other drives. Because, but for non-Linux users, there is a swap space, uh, which is uh, SDA one, because the, we're naming the partitions. This is what was referred to as roots, which is where your operating system and programs live. It's where basically where the bulk of what gets installed gets installed. And then we have home, which is user space, which is where my files go. Now, the reason why quite so much of it has been occupied already is because Steam installs into home. I somewhat wish it didn't, but it does. So if we have a look up here, that's my root. It's only a small uh, partition, about 15 gig. It's half full. Uh, and it probably will never get much larger. This is my home folder. It's around 212 gig, 213 gig, something like that. Uh, again, it's just under half full. I will do my best to ensure it doesn't become much fuller. And then we have the two hard drives, uh, well, the one mechanical hard drive and the scratch drive. The mechanical hard drive, if you notice, I have it set up to be um, mounted within my home folder. I'm going to be the only user on this computer. No one else is going to be using it. So it's just going to be me and also the scratch drive. So when we have a little look here, we have data and scratch. And if we look on data, notice I've been putting installing my Steam games here. But if we ask data how big it is, it tells you it's best part of a terabyte, and you've only used seven. But that's a folder. This is one of the differences between um, Windows and Linux: is you tend not to treat drives as separate things. They tend to be mounted within your file system. This is how I have mine because it's convenient for me. It would be slightly different on yours, but and there's Scratch. And bom, 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 bom. where are we doing properties? All of a sudden, this folder is only 60 gig in size. So. I suppose we've got to get to the question of why do I use solid and not one of the many other different Linux distributions? Okay, I started using, first started playing with Linux in the mid to late 90s. Um, I was always interested in operating systems and fiddling and playing, and but around Oh, it would have been, I can't remember, oh, Mandrake, one of the Mandrake district. I first thought, you know what, I could actually use this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so about early 2000s, sort of 2004, something like that, I started using Linux on my desktop, f uh, well, on at least one of my computers full-time. Around 2006, I discovered Ubuntu, and I quite liked Ubuntu. Ubuntu was pretty cool. Um, most people did back in 2006, 2007. I also spent some time running PC Linux OS. So what I want from a distribution is for me not to be too bothered and fussed with fiddling and messing that is stable, because that's something a lot of people seem to have have forgotten within the Linux community, that stability was actually one of the core principles of why Linux was great in the early days. Uh, if you remember back to, uh, if you're old enough to remember back to the 90s, we had horrendous operating systems from Microsoft that would crash, and programs that would crash all the time. Everybody knew that if you're working on a document, you had to save every few minutes, otherwise the computer would swallow it. It wasn't reliable, and Linux 
was reliable. Linux wouldn't crash. I think they. I suppose what often happens with the Linux community is that they, or the open source community, is they 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 pounce on a problem, they solve the problem, they then move on, and they go to off to fix another problem. And I think stability has become boring, and nobody's interested in stability anymore. I'm still interested in stability. So this is why I use these people. That was one of the things I was going to show you is how you install software. By the way, this business of keep on being asked for your password, this is kind of important. Um, the reason being asked for your password all the time is because certain people who are using your computer shouldn't be doing what I'm about to do, anything that needs a password. But also, as it's just me and my computer, and no one else is going to use my computer, it's a reminder to me that I'm actually about to do something that's going to be system altering. So it asks for your password. This is the software manager, which is the software discovery. Um, this is where I'm going to show my ignorance. I'm not sure whether this is a KDE feature or whether this is particular to Solid. Don't know. To be honest, I don't care. Um, it's a software manager. In Windows, what you tend to do is you you'll search for something on the in on the internet. So you'll download it and then you'll run it, and it'll ask you lots of questions like, do you um, want to install it here? Do you want to install it on there? Do you want to um, put an icon on the desktop? Do you want to put an icon in your start menu? Do you do you want to install this um, uh, browser web bar or change your search engine to this? It asks you lots of questions. In Linux they don't tend to do that when it's coming from somewhere like this. So for instance, oh gosh, games. Let's find a oh, wine installed. It's got a little tick ne next to it. Uh, super cart. Super tux cart. We've got reviews, which is nice. You know, 149 reviews, lots of stars. If we double click on this, we get a little image of it. Uh, and we can look at the reviews if we want to. Yeah. So we get an idea. Someone didn't like it. I always like to. Uh, yeah. He's not speaking English, but he does say netbook in the middle, which probably means your computer's not very good. So you want to install this. Remember, if this was Windows, you would be finding a file on a website, downloading it, trying to figure out whether you can trust it. Nah, you want to install it in this. You see a little blue Pogas bar on the bottom, I'll log it chugs. Um, it really is that simple. Because what happened was installing software in Linux used to be a pain in the bum. You had to resolve the dependencies. It was a criticism. So people did their best to sort it out. They overcompensated, if you like, and you end up with a system that is so brain dead simple to the point where um, these various different software managers and the whole concept of um, having um, repositories which where the files are kept on the internet in one place has been sort of stolen and that's the window sorry the uh, Apple App Store iTunes all that stuff where you just find a piece of software click on it download it install it it comes from Linux the whole concept comes from Linux so I've just installed that game so oh god should we have a little look at it it's probably a bit uh, where are we oh applications oh my background changed backgrounds so you can set that up games arcade look Ooh, that's a bit loud. I'm going to try and turn it off. Uh. Ah, that's better. Gordon Bennett. I got a sneaky feeling you didn't hear that, but that was incredibly loud. That was very loud. In fact, uh, yes. Nice and quiet now. Graphics effect. Custom settings, vertical sync required, restart, frame buffer objects. Ooh, we can choose our screen resolution. 
full screen, remember, Windows location, apply resolution. But you see, we've got a game. I think we should probably have it set up to the top. Um, oh, some of them are locked. Should we be the BSD devil? Yeah, let's be a novice. Uh, 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 oh, these are all trapped. All these are all locked. On trial. Follow the leader. Easter egg hunt. And they're all locked. I don't know what I've got to do. Anyway, this is beside the point. Um, I downloaded and installed a game by pressing, by finding it and pressing one button. That is a really common experience within Linux. Um, and that's not just solid, that's most of the distributions. It's that simple. So, I don't know, it's a bit of a rambling dis display of what, what I, how I have things set up. Um, I only installed this two days ago. Um, uh, I've got TeamSpeak running. Um, I've got, as I say, I've got Steam running. I've got my Steam games, Goat Simulator. That is a funny game for about half an hour, and then there's a limit to how many times you can laugh at the same joke. It's like the, it's it's like a re it's like a comic with one really funny joke. It's a really very very funny joke, but after he's told the same joke five times, it starts to becoming a little flat. That's Goat Simulator for you. But I've got loads of games on here. Um, my favourite. What I've been playing most, most a lot is Dave Defeat Source because I love running around shooting things with old guns. Because I used to play Medal of Honor. I used to play it competitively in our clan, and I'm talking Medal of Honor Allied Assault about 12 years ago. And this game reminds me a lot of that. Um, to the point where I might give you a gameplay video of that at some point. I know this is a rambling and somewhat disjointed review of a distro. And it's not a very good review of a distro. Um, I use Solid because it's solid, because it's dependable, because um, it's it's. I would wish it was a slightly more rolling release than once every three months. At least it's not once every six months. Uh, if you get up to once every six months, I, I don't think you can still call it rolling. Um, it would be nice if it was a little more frequent than one that once every three months, but that's how they've chosen to do it. That's what they've got the resources within the community to support because they test everything prior to releasing it. Obviously, you get your security updates straight away. Um, this is the little software thingy. Software thingy, that's descriptive. Um, the update manager. And this is running all the time, making sure you get your security updates in a timely fashion. Um, I know, look, there is a package to install. And this is in, this is doing an update in, in Linux for the, the Windows users um, who have never... That's how simple it is. You just start it and run it. Um, I mean, I've got Dropbox integrated. The only thing that I can't do that I want to do is play this game of all the things that I do regularly on a computer this is it it's not play games because I've got loads of games to play. This one particular game is a game that I would like to play but cannot because I'm running Linux. So personally, this is the only compromise I'm making. Right now, for this experiment, that's worth it. Um, everything else, everything else I want to do, make videos, record my desktop, record what I'm doing now, I can do. I can upload to YouTube. I, all the stuff you do on the internet, obviously, you can still do. You know, your 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 web browser is your web browser. Doesn't the web browser doesn't particularly care what's behind it and what's running in the background. Um. So all of your web-based stuff is exactly the same. I can documents, 
not that I do a lot of spreadsheet work these days. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I sit and make videos for YouTube, so that's not important to me. But I can do it if I want to do it. I can record sound. I can, I can watch videos. I can watch DVDs. Um, I can, I can do anything and everything that I would normally do when I sat at my computer. Let's have a slightly more interesting wallpaper than just a solid one. Well, that's a bit slightly. Well, that's pretty. I like landscapes, by the way. I like nice, high detailed images of landscapes. That's my wallpaper. What's the next one? Ooh, oh, that's nice. Yes, I'll use that one for a minute. Um, and again, downloading all of these, that's all within the. And anyone who is used to. Um, uh, used to KDE is fully aware of this and you can get more wallpapers it's all built in it's all built into the operating system or into the desktop um, I saw one that looked quite nice that looks nice doesn't it that's it done that's now in my rotation automatically Ooh, that's pretty. Poor frost. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I always do. That's nature of my nature of my videos. If you ever use it, if you are after a quick and concise outlook on on my Linux desktop, pfft, odd luck. You're getting me rambling on and, and muttering about various different things as they come along. So I think we should really wrap this up. Um, solid. It's what I'm using. It doesn't mean you should use it. I don't care what distro you use. There's loads of them. Loads of distros. Um, I like this one. It has a lot of the features that I consider to be important. Stability. Rolling, even if it's only semi-rolling. And that means, and the reason why I say that to the non-Linux non users, uh, a distro that comes out on a fixed schedule every six months or every year or so that needs to be reinstalled is a pain in the bum. A distro, say for instance Ubuntu, I'm going to pick on Ubuntu. I, I've been an Ubuntu user for eight years. Um, is when they do, when you update between one distro and the next what happens is you lose all your PPAs, you lose all your fancy settings, you keep your files and you keep the programs you had installed but you lose all your tweaks and all your settings and all your fiddly bits that you just normally take forever like oh, the trim support, although the trim's now been added. With this you don't. You keep your tweaks, you keep your bits and bobs. It just keeps on rolling. You don't have to reinstall and the upgrade from one variant to the next, in other words, the, the big one that happens every three months, um, is, is easier to live with. So, it's Debian-based, which is important to me because I like a Debian-based distro. It is closer to Debian uh, because it's just built on Debian. Um, so, yeah. I like it. I like the KDE desktop. I've always liked KDE. Um, Gnome's not bad, uh, but I prefer KDE. Um, it has the features I want, and yeah, this is this is this is what I use. Now, if you choose to use something else, that's fine. I don't have a problem. You know, um, I, I know people are, are using Arch. They love the fiddling. They love the bleeding edge nature of it. I'm just not interested. I have had my fill of fiddling with Linux distros, I had it my fill of fiddling with Linux distros back in the 1990s. I don't want to be bothered with it. What we were trying to achieve back in the 1990s was a stable desktop operating system and bingo, Solid XK is a stable operating system, desktop operating system. It was what was being tried. What they were trying to, we were trying to achieve back in the 90s, back when we had Windows 98 uh, that blue screened if you 
looked at it funny. We wanted a solid, stable, fast, feature-rich desktop operating system. Here we are, 15, 20 years later, and we've got it. And Solid XK is a good implementation of those, that, that ethos. And um, that's why I use it. Might be worth a look. It's not exciting. It's not an exciting distro at all. Um, this is a distro for someone who wants to get things done, not who likes to play with distros. I've been a distro hopper. Sometimes it's fun just looking at the different ways distros do things. This isn't this isn't for distro hoppers. This is for someone who just needs a stable operating system to get things done that's kept up to date. Yeah. This is why I use Solid XK. Um, uh, but it's not for everyone. Well, time to wrap this video up. I have been rambling on and on, going round and round in circles. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my somewhat rambling introduction to uh, my Linux distribution of choice and how I have it set up on my computer. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.